Okay, this is part two. We're gonna pick up where I left off before. You know, I said I just loved when the entire world had to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. You know, through teaching, I, I see students and they're pulled in all these different directions because they wanna be involved in so much. And we as parents want our kids to be involved in things, but we tend to get spread so thin that we forget just like we did because a lot of times we're spread thin along with them. And we forget about that time of quality time. And God allowed this, I think, to regroup us, to realize we need that quality time, that family time. We need that time in our devotion. We need our time to spend with God to seek his guidance, to read those scriptures. Because, you know, I, I found it's amazing. God is amazing, you know. And I always find it interesting that the Bible study that I'm dealing with in the morning time before I leave the house to go to work or before I start my day is always something that I needed for that day. Sometimes I might have known that I was going to need that. Sometimes I might not have known until later on. But it was like, wow. And I immediately just thank God. Lord, if you hadn't prepared me for that, how would I have reacted? Would I have reacted in a different way? So, you know, God is, he, you know, Paul is saying here that he wants us to pull together. He wants us to be unified because if we have that same, if we're like-minded of Christ, and we have that same kind of love, that same kind of uh, unity and, and spirit and harmony and, and, and goals to aim for, then it, we become Christ-like. We become doing what he wants us to do on this earth. We have our purpose. Every person has their purpose. You know, help, uh, humility is a healthy, balanced view of ourselves, a recognition of our strengths and of our weaknesses. We refrain from judging others and, and look for the good in others. Humanity is being comfortable enough with ourselves and strong enough to make a deliberate commitment to others' welfare. Let's continue on. Verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equally with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Christ, we as Christians are to have that same mindset as Jesus did. Um, to understand God, what God's like, that we need to look to Jesus. He was our example. He humbled himself. He became a man, a human, a human being that hurt the same way we did, that laughed the same way we did, that cried the same way we did, that experienced joy and happiness and sadness. He experienced it all. And we should not be impressed with worldly status or a position, but we should have the same humble attitude that Christ did as he served others. He said the only area in which his followers were to seek to be first was in serving others. And then he offered this supreme example, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for media. Jesus chose to be obedient to his Father's will. Obedience, that's one thing that we have to remember. We want our children to obey us. We want our students to obey us. 
We want our coworkers to obey us if we're in a leadership position. So we need to realize that God wants us to obey him. You know, to the Jews that opposed him, he said, I can do nothing on my own. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And in Gethsemane, facing the cross, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. As God's son, Christ was consistently, consistently obedient to his heavenly father. He died the cruelest death that could ever be done. He was beatily brutal. He was, he was brutally beaten. He was mocked. He was hung on a cross like common thieves and, and traitors and, and slaves were crucified. Christ placed the Father's will above his own. We are to live with an attitude of humility as we relate to others with a healthy, balanced view of ourselves. We neither think too highly nor too little of ourselves. With that wholesome attitude, we can serve others effectively. Now let's skip down to verses 13 through 15 in chapter 2 of Philippians. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God with fault, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like the stars of the universe. Paul simply supplied the Philippians with their who, where, what, and why of, of Christian empowerment. Who? God who's working in you. Where? In you, in your heavenly body, in the body of Christ, those around you who are fellow Christians, what? God enabling them to, to will and to work. And why? To work according to his good purpose. You know, Paul did not advocate Passivity in the Christian life in which believers do nothing and God does everything for them. Rather, God works in believers and believers actively work. God does not work in us because we have worked. Just the opposite is true. Because God works, therefore we work. In verse 13, it's one of the most comforting verses in the New Testament. And it says that we do not strive alone. God is working with us. And he is. He's working with us. So when we argue, when we complain, when we grumble about things, you know, that's, that's not being the model that Christ wants us to be. We, Paul continues with this challenge by wanting the believers to be blameless with their regard to their lives toward one another as well as to the world. You know, people are watching us. You know, how we behave, how we react, how we handle situations. They're watching us now. They're listening. What are they seeing? What are they hearing? When we start talking Paul's words seriously, and we take Paul's words seriously, our relationships will be impacted in an extremely positive way. We are to be like stars, just lighting up the sky. We should be light-giving bodies to those around us. We are blessed and through all situations, if we have the response, the relationship 
that key word again, relationship that we should have with our Heavenly Father, then our worldly relationships will be impacted in an extremely positive way. Yield. Yield to Christ. Obey. Obey what he has to say. Have that relationship with him. Trust and obey. We are the gifts that keep on giving because we have Jesus in our hearts. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time of Bible study. Thank you for this time of opening our hearts and allowing us to truly look inside ourselves and evaluate ourselves. Are we living Christ-like? Are we obeying? Are we trusting? Are we being in your word and spending that quality time, Father? Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessing of being here. In Christ's name, amen.